Hello and welcome back to the Esports Report presented by Xbox One. I'm joined by, uh, obviously, Mr. X to my left and Brycey to my right. We're just going over exactly how the uh, European Qualifier is going to yes. work. Touched on the format and some of the teams which you guys are going to have to watch out for uh, when that Qualifier actually starts. And we haven't even told the viewers yeah, when, when the Qualifier does it start, is. Bricey? When is it, Bryce? It starts... He doesn't know, does I just had to double check. 28. <laughs> Saturday. Make sure. Yeah, there you morning. go, Bryce. You give okay. the macro information. I have, to, I have to just double check these things. If you say something wrong, then I get crucified. So That's I don't really want that to happen. It's better to be sure than yeah. uh, than say something incorrect. And, you know, we talked about some gameplay before the commercial break, and we do actually yep. have that for you. Uh, the first gameplay, we'll throw it up as soon as you want, is going to be Epsilon versus so, Wash. Uh, it's a uh, Search and Destroy Solar. Okay, Bryce, uh, you were yep. obviously casting this. We, we talked about Epsilon. Earlier on, they didn't drop a single round the yeah. whole qualifier in such. Who is the standout S&D player on that lineup? Well, um, if you go back and kind of talk about it for a while, I mean, Swanee actually has been performing, but it's usually Tommy. Tommy's kind of an S&D god. Right. Um, and you talk about Epsilon, you talk about two duos at the moment. It's been two duos for a while, uh, even in other kind of configurations of the squad. Tommy and Swanee have always kind of been a duo. Um, and Mac and, jo Mac and Josh are kind of an unknown duo. Not a lot of people know about them, but they tend to win when they're together. Um, if I remember correctly, Tommy and Josh also don't lose when they're together either. I think they've nine lands they've attended together. I think they've won all of them. <laughs> That's... That's a good stat to have. It's, it's 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 a good number. I'm not sure if it's nine. I mean, Tommy's won more European finals than I think I've ever witnessed. So there's a lot yeah. of numbers there. He's he's won a lot of tournaments. It's actually quite kind of funny because you always see on like uh, some of the subreddit when people are referring to Aix as the most winningest player. Someone because it's like oh, actually Tommy's won won more events than Aix really? has. Yeah, but it's just the the big argument is whether you count them as majors or not. I guess. Um, yeah. But Tommy has won a lot. Of events. I mean, th this guy is very, very talented. Great to see him uh, playing with, you know, the likes of, of Swanee and Madka again, and especially when you include Josh there. I, I, I did kind of notice awesome. um, over the qualifier just how how many fans kind of Swanee's picked up now. Oh yeah, um, it was it was amazing. The, the love for Swanee, I, for some, it's actually increased his profile in the UK as well. There's a lot really? of people now. Yeah, uh, you see, you know, UK fans kind of loving Swanee. And it's not, like I said, it's not just Optic fans. I think it, the, the kind of the brief period over there, the fact that everybody uh, in the, in Europe was kind of rooting for Swanee, saying, yeah, this is great. Right. We love Swanee. And, and I think that, that says a lot about Swanee as well. The fact that so many people love him, all the pros love him, you know, everyone was, was happy for him. Yeah. It's a lot about his personality and what he kind of brings to the team. It's interesting because he's normally, you know, relatively, uh, you know, quiet guy, especially on yeah. social media. He was never really known for tweeting, etc. And, you know, now has an extremely big fan base, as you said, Bryce, and, and people are really still rooting for him. I know a lot of the North American pros, yeah. you know, still constantly love uh, wishing him luck and et cetera, et cetera. So curious to see what he's going to achieve at this yep. card champs. It honestly One, wouldn't surprise me to see this Epsilon team have a great placement. One more uh, thing I've just kind of realized, I've actually just seen a, a Twitter post here. This game, I, I remember a little bit more clearly now, actually has um, one of the kind of the new UK casters is playing in it, and he doesn't do well. In fact, he does very, very badly. Um, so I'll be looking forward to see Just Stealth kind of drop a, uh, I think he goes zero and, zero and six. God knows how many, zero and six, zero and yes. seven, something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, zero and six. Good job, Stealth. Good job. It's not very good. I, dude, I complimented him on his casting too. He looked, he looked really sharp at, I believe, it was Am2 Pro the past weekend. He was looking pretty, you know, pretty good. I uh, didn't realize he was this bad at the game. <laughs> that definitely has an effect on my judgment. Having said that, well, I'm all full of the game, and people say that's actually not true. <laughs> that is actually not true. I am seven and two against Mr. X in oh, series. Stop that. Okay, so I I don't want to I don't want to hear that on AW. X, X, I can, you're seriously letting him beat you? All I remember beat is, him. I am straight destroying him. All I remember him. is that G1 in the casters match. Shut up. I dominated, even though we lost. You weren't a caster G2. then. G two. How can you consider yourself a caster at G one? Yeah, I was like pretty much. Just you were off a of player, player. <laughs> essentially. <laughs> you just played at Cod Champs. How does that make? Carried Benson. That's all I was. G two. Oh, nah, nah. Hold on, hold on. The gameplay is over. Epsilon wins six zero, but that isn't what this is about anymore. That, G two. The, the gameplay has gone out the window. G2. I don't care about that. G two. I absolutely dominated the casters match. You were not I a had, caster. Like, something like you got carried by fifty Mutto. kills. Mud Dog was Dog playing. Carried you. Mud Dog carried you, and we had to carry Ralph. Mud Dog carried you. Our fourth was wearing a Batman suit. Exactly. I was dominant. All I'm saying is, if we did it right now, I'm 100% sure that people from Europe who are casters, see, so yeah, I can include myself in that, would dominate the North American casters. No way. You have Puckett. You have <laughs> Maven. Maven yeah, plays more Counter-Strike than COD. How are you going to win when I can single-handedly beat you? 
I would, uh, we would win. You are so wow. beyond illusion. Anyway, it would be me, Puckett, Maven, and who? Who are you gonna get? Jack. You gonna you play with Jack? I'll go, Jack. You gonna play with Jack? I'll put my differences. It'll be like, be like Parasite Nakes teaming up. It'll be <laughs> me and Jack putting our differences aside, trying to and take down all you Euros. I'm sure. Wait, unfortunately, win. Momo's casting now, so we'll take him. Oh, there you go. You just got screwed. <laughs> oh, that doesn't mean anything. Wow, that's just that's that's highly offensive to all the nah, Europeans in the chat. Nah, 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 um, <laughs> well, that gameplay is over. Six and zero. Yes, that was very very quick. So let's actually head over to the second gameplay. This is uh, Epsilon versus Washed. Uh, Again. Detroit uplink though. So this is a game three, and I remember at UMG Bryce when we were watching some of the Europeans um, come out and play. Mad Cat especially, his uplink play was on point. Like, he, he was looking real good at controlling yeah. that drone. And that's, and funny enough, I actually think that's the rarity in Europe. I, I believe they've kind of fixed it now, but one thing that the Europeans did take away from uh, UMG was mm -hmm. their uplink game was nowhere near as good as the Americans' uplink game was. Um, and I think that's something that, that they admitted to themselves. They were like, we really need to step it up in this game now, type. You know, we need to kind of get it get to it. It's a new game type, and we clearly haven't played it enough. So the, the big thing about that is I remember watching TCM play it. Um, at the very, very start of the game, and they looked amazing at it. I remember hearing, you know, the likes of Shane saying, you know, like, one, two, one, two, you know, referring to like football references. And the way they were playing it was like watching Barcelona play football. Yeah. It was phenomenal. But a couple of tournaments that you guys had didn't actually have uplink in the yes. rule set. Yeah. And I think that hurt them. Did, is that really, is that a massive factor? And is that what you're saying? I think, I think when, when you've got a new game type like that, you, you, if you don't put the time in, there are going to be just, just muscle memory, things you're not right. going to have as you know perfect as you want if you throw and you miss and all that kind of build up to that throw uh, and it's just because you haven't thrown the ball enough or you haven't practiced it enough or you haven't practiced that spot enough mm -hmm. that you've only got yourself to blame and, and and that's something i really kind of hope uh, we won't see again i mean this gameplay right now it's on a 3-0 up was there a point performance in the qualifiers just dominant yes <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, they, 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 they were dominant. They were dominant the entire way through, and I think that's why I'm so excited about regional. I just want to see all these big teams go against each other once. I mean, because there's always like kind of events right near the start, um, especially in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. But now we get to this period of time, we're kind of like, right, well, let's see. Now everybody knows. There's no excuses. You know, nobody's grinded the game for 20 days in 21 days. Um, everybody's got a decent amount of playing time. You know, the strategies are down. The meta has evolved. Let's see what you got. Now, Bryce, uh, we've seen towards the end of the life cycle of Call of Duty games, the European teams put up a much better fight. I can definitely say, you know, Epsilon towards the end of Black Ops 2 put up a great fight. And then obviously Epsilon again at the end of Ghost uh, played extremely well. Yeah, you said they were the hottest team that you guys actually played against. In, in Black Ops 2, I definitely think so. Uh, do you think that the European teams now are closer to the skill gap of North American teams? And if you think a European team came over and boot camped, in the states for you know a month or two pre-champs that you know, their chances would uh, increase dramatically i think that's what's going to have to happen in future i mean we talk about it all the time and look i'm european like i kind of it, it breaks my heart to see any european team do badly at a big competition mm. regardless of you know they want to cast them non-biased but it's still i've got a, like, a personal relationship with these guys the difference has been the difference has always been there is greater kind of depth of talent and competition in the states and the Top teams can play against the top teams day in, day out, um, and we just don't kind of have that over here yet. Um, funny enough, the kind of it, it's evolving now. We've kind of got five-ish top teams, I would say, uh, in the UK at the very least. So there's a bit more kind of competition. But yeah, I do think I do think Europe kind of struggles when it comes to that, just because they can't play against the likes of you know Omdic every day or your Envious every day. They kind of want to get into that thing. I do think that there will be a boot camp coming. I wouldn't be surprised if more European teams come over to America for this one. How possible is that, though? I think it's 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 highly possible. From what yeah. I've been hearing rumblings of, I think several teams will be coming over to boot camp. I can't confirm that, obviously. Right. It's not my my place to announce stuff for teams, but a few a few pros have kind of said, "Oh, we'll be over there." Hmm. Honestly, I hope so because we we've seen um, I believe TCM did it with Envious. Yes, I think that was that was last year for Champs, yeah. was it not? Yeah. Blue. yeah, that was uh, pretty awesome because they they streamed that. And you got to think, you know, maybe Swanee's relationship with Optic. Do Epsilon go out? Maybe have a <laughs> well, I there? said this. I was like, oh, well, that'd be great to kind of get right? Swanee back in the house and have you Epsilon come over. Optic Nation, Optic Gaming, and maybe Epsilon. They all. It's a lot of people in the Optic house. That Optic house is big. Can confirm. Big bundle. It's 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 a nice house too. Uh, who knows? That could be something that they plan. That'd be pretty cool. Because you, you, you brought that up yesterday, yeah. Matt. You were saying, you know, Optic Nation, Optic Gaming could do an Optic Land. Let's not forget, Phase have a house too. Uh, TK, 
with TK the house with the thing. house. Like, there's a lot of opportunities. Envy still with their house, so there's a ton of opportunity for these teams to get together. I think that's one of the great things as well. Like, I think um, last year when TCM went over to Envy, so I was I, obviously I was there. Right. Um, and I could kind of tell the teams were given critique for various map points. I think both teams actually learned a lot. Um, Envious obviously went all the way through to come on kind of second. Um, and that was that was really interesting for me because obviously TCM didn't manage to crack the top eight. Um, but the, the maps, if I remember correctly, the tally was like maybe one map in favor of TCM at the end of that entire series. Wow, really? Uh, overall, maybe one or two. And I was kind of saying both these teams were just you know constantly going at it. And I think if you're an American team and you're looking at bringing a European team over to kind of play in your house, not only are you going to be able to practice against you know the same kind of people that you play against all the time, you know, online and, and kind of playing and breaking that down. But you're going to have another team there with, you know, no prejudices. They're not going to kind of know you as well. They get to play against, you know, different styles. You know, you're not going to know exactly where these players are going. You're going to have to adapt. And you could run into that at champs as well. And that's why it's great practice. You've got to remember the Australians last year kind of shocked <laughs> yeah. everybody. Yeah. Nobody expected their way of playing. The more kind of different play styles you can get in and kind of adapt to on the fly, the better you're going to kind of be prepared. Yeah. You pretty much nailed the nailed it on the head there, Bryce. To be honest with you, because you had to be prepared for all the different play styles, and you know everyone plays different. You know, <laughs> I remember you know starting at MW3 against Black Ops 2, Bryce. We always used to say the the French S and D was just completely different to, to anything else that you're going to see. Um, so you do need to try and be as versatile as possible. I feel. Yeah, I mean, you still got you still got that going on now. I mean, I think Guitar Girl I saw in a video the other day was 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 saying I still play at a very high sensitivity. Still. And yeah, he still plays at very high sensitivity. He plays I higher than what he, what most others would play, you know, three or four. He plays higher than that. He likes to play higher. He believes he it, he believes it gives him an advantage. Um, I remember and he's, and he's good enough to pull it off. Yeah, his his reaction time is just godlike. It really is. Um, I'd be curious to know exactly what he plays in this game because I feel like on this game more than anything else, I think I think that's a really important factor. You still see you know pros out now tweeting, you know, oh, is three or four better? Which is where should I be playing? Yeah. What's the best factor? Um, Especially on a movement game based like this one. I mean, right. if you're able to just kind of turn around and activate a boost in a different direction a bit quicker and it can get you out of a gunfight, yeah. all the better for it. I mean, if you get caught in the open, instead of trying to jump and burst forward, if you can quickly turn and spin and burst sideways in somewhere, it's going to benefit you. And that's, that's something I'm really looking forward to uh, at Worlds as well. I, I just can't wait to kind of see all these teams. I believe it's going to be a really sneaky world championship, if I'm honest. <laughs> it's just going to, it's going to, everybody's going to just have this big playbook of secrets they've all been keeping. I, probably, I completely agree with you. They probably have all the same you. secret, but nobody knows. I completely we agree saw. with you because I've, I actually um, was stumbling across some stuff during the North American regionals, and uh, I tweeted about something that SB were doing. They asked me quickly to delete it. Did so. Uh, apparently, I stumbled across one of their secrets. Um, a couple of other teams, uh, whilst we've been casting in the Pro League, have been trying out some different stuff. And there is a huge, huge book of secrets, I feel. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, just the, all the, the different the, regions have In them. the online qualifier, too, Bracey, uh, we saw on uh, Detroit S&D, team push through school with an exo shield. The guy it led with so an exo shield. Ran in, had a guy head glitch real quick, take that player out. So it I definitely think we're going to see so sneaky. tons of different yeah. stuff. Players I, trying I, the uh, shield and uplink, too. I fully believe this will be the, the sneakiest world champs. I don't know why I'm giving you that title, but I am. The, the sneakiest, sneakiest world champs is going to be. I've already, seen, you know, I've already seen players kind of saying, oh, we have a secret for this, or we have a secret uh -huh. for search and destroy, and one or two have been told to me. I'm like, that's kind of interesting. I wonder how many teams actually know that. Yeah. I've not seen it in anything I've casted. Um, so I fully believe like it will be pulled out when it's needed. Uh, and I think that's great. I mean, I'm sure uh, all the casters before Worlds will get together and go, well, I found out this secret from this team. Right. Remember, if yes. you cast them, keep an eye on that. We should really do that. Um, we should all, like, get together and make a, like, Excel document yeah. and just have, like, every team's hidden strategies and then we'll know it all. Then we can create a team and win cut champs. Sorted. That's yeah. my paycheck for the year. Um, <laughs> but for now, guys, quick commercial break after that gameplay number two. Epsilon just absolutely dominated that Detroit upling. It wasn't even close. Uh, when we return, though, we do have one more gameplay that we'll all just be kind of uh, having a general little chit-chat about. Be right back.